it is that time of year. It's the time of year that you just want something warm and cozy to warm you up for dinner. And that something is oftentimes a casserole. And this week I'm sharing with you three different casseroles using three different meats. So surely at least one of these is gonna feed your family pretty soon. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the making. The first casserole I'm making tonight is using diced ham. So put this away just in case you have leftover ham after the Christmas holiday. But um, you can also buy the diced ham at the grocery store, which is what I did this time. This is just a ham casserole with broccoli and rice. We don't have a whole lot of cutting to do because I did go ahead and use the grocery store's help and get broccoli florets. But we do need about a half a cup of onion diced. We need about two cups of broccoli florets. These are already washed because this is the steam in the bag kind. So I don't have to worry about washing these again. So I'll be right back after I cut these up. And then the last thing I need to do is just prep some cheddar cheese. We need two cups of shredded cheddar. Let's preheat our oven as we always do to 350. I've got a large saucepan here. I'm heating it to about medium heat. I've got two tablespoons of unsalted butter. We're just gonna allow that to melt. So our butter is pretty much melted. We're gonna take our diced onion and toss that in there. One-handed is always difficult. <laughs> there we go. And we're gonna saute this for about five minutes just to soften it really well. Our onions are soft. Let's add in some chicken broth. You need low sodium chicken broth. I've got about two and a half cups here. We're also gonna add in just about a tablespoon of olive oil. And we need about one and a quarter cups of rice. I rinsed mine. So we're ready to pour that in. Jumping in here to tell you a little bit about today's sponsor, which is Mary Ruth Organics. Before I tell you a little bit more about them, just know that you can shop from their website or you can go on Amazon and shop for their supplements as well. But if you're ever shopping on Amazon and you're wanting to use my code that I'm gonna give you in just a minute, just make sure that you are buying the products as sold by Mary Ruth's Organics and not a third party because my code won't work unless you're buying it from Mary Ruth on Amazon. So Mary Ruth Organics has been around since about 2014 and Mary Ruth knew what she was doing when she started. She's a certified health educator, a nutrition consultant, culinary chef, and she's a mama of four. Mary Ruth's products are very high quality. They're vegan, non-GMO, and they come in different forms and I'll tell you about that. If you've ever tried any of their gummies, they are super tasty. But if you prefer, like I do, to get your supplements in liquid form, you can do that. What makes Mary Ruth super unique is that they do have a lot of options in the liquid form, which aids in digestion. Another thing I love is that because she is a mama to four, she made sure that she made supplements that are good for all stages of life. So your entire family can take Mary Ruth supplements. Speaking of stages of life, just within the last couple of years, I have entered a new stage of life and that is called the 40 Plus Club. So my favorite product from Mary Ruth's is this one. This is a liquid multivitamin for women over the age of 40 and it is liposomal. And if you're like I was, you don't know what that means. So let me tell you. Liposomal technology allows for better absorption of vitamins and nutrients into your body. The vitamins and nutrients that you're gonna be getting from this include vitamins D3, B12, folate, zinc, magnesium, and omega fatty acids, three and nine. All really great stuff, all packed in this vanilla peach flavor. It's a treat. Every single morning when I take this, I look forward to it. I will tell you if I miss this a day, I can tell immediately because my energy level drops about midway through the day. This does help support energy levels, as well as your immunity, your cellular health, muscle function, cardiovascular, healthy bones, metabolism, cell growth, nerve function, calcium absorption, and it helps your skin. But one of the unique things about their multivitamin that's for the 40 plus is that it has relief for menopause symptoms and it has hormonal support. I don't currently have hot flashes. I know those bad boys are coming, but this is supposed to help with that too. You could mix it in a smoothie if you wanted to, but I just look forward to that spoonful every morning. So just click on the link below in my description box. And when you go to either Mary Ruth's re website or to Amazon, you're gonna use my code MROMANDY25. And that's gonna get you 25% off of 
all of Mary Ruth's products. This is a limited time offer, so be sure to go check it out now. And remember, if you're going to Amazon, make sure it's being sold by Mary Ruth's, not a third-party seller. But go stock up on some supplements for you and your family at 25% off using my code MROMANDY25. Let's go back to cooking. Okay, I got all my rice in there. We are bringing this up to a boil, so I did turn it up to about medium-high. Someone has emerged. So while we wait on this to come up to a bowl, let's go over here and give the cheese monster her cheese. Look at this cute. Okay, okay, let, let, I'll show them that in a minute. Okay, yep. First things first. Okay, there it goes. Now, look at this adorable uh, kitchen towel from Geometry House. I love their kitchen towels. If you've never tried their kitchen towels, highly recommend. They are super thin. They're almost like a waffle knit and they dry so well, they absorb so well, and then they themselves dry after um, drying off all of your dishes. You hang it to dry and it's dry so fast. Love these and they have the cutest designs and I picked out this one for Christmas. Okay, now that this has come up to a bowl, I'm going to reduce it to a simmer and cover it. We are gonna let this cook for about seven minutes it has been seven minutes and what we're gonna do we're not gonna stir it you're gonna refrain from stirring it at this point but take your lid off oh that's hot and we're gonna add in our broccoli you need two cups of broccoli florets and basically we're just gonna be steaming it on the top for the next eight to ten minutes just depending on when our rice is done pop our lid back on timer just went off so let's check this and kind of see where we're at if our rice is done yet think it is so at this point what we're gonna do is just turn off the heat and we're gonna put the lid back on and just let it hang out for about five to ten more minutes before we move on here's where it gets a little tricky this is a large saucepan however I've got to add a lot of stuff to this so I'm gonna add as much as I can and then we'll just we'll we'll mix the rest of it in the casserole dish if we need to but you need a can of cream of chicken soup. I've got this cream of chicken with herbs. We're also gonna add in about half a cup of sour cream. I'm just gonna eyeball this. It's usually about two really big scoops. And you put some on the stove too, just so you have extra to clean up. It's good, it's real good. Let me go ahead and start stirring this. Yeah, this is already full. We need to add in about three fourths a cup of milk. I'm using 2%. Stir that around. And we're gonna add in about half of our cheese. So I have two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. We're gonna add in half now. We are almost to the top. I don't know if y'all can tell. And I've still gotta add in the ham, but I think it's gonna all fit. It'll be okay. And it's not gonna be in here for long, so it's okay. You need two cups of diced ham, which is exactly what this package is. It's gonna be all the way to the top here, friends, but that's okay. We're gonna be going over to a casserole dish here in just a second. Oh, so you may wanna use a Dutch oven for this. I mean, if you've got a large saucepan, you can chance it like I did, but that was really close. <laughs> but it worked. Let's go over to our nine by 13 casserole dish. Let's spray it with a little nonstick spray. I need to mix it up a little bit better. It was hard to mix on the stove top because it was so full, but I'll be all right. We're gonna have a topping for this too. It's gonna be so good. Where's the rest of our cheese? We need to put the remainder of our two cups of cheese. So our other cup is gonna go across the top and I'm gonna get some aluminum foil. We're just gonna cover this and bake it for 15 minutes. So that's going in a 350 degree oven for 15. Okay, we need a couple of tablespoons of butter melted. So I'll do that here in just a second but I also need to crush up some Ritz crackers. It says one cup of crushed Ritz crackers. I'm just doing one sleeve. I'm assuming that should be enough. You could definitely just crush them up in your hand right over it, um, but that's gonna take a little bit of time and I, I'm hungry and I, don't, I wanna be able to pour this right on it as soon as it comes out of the oven. So I'm gonna crush these up. That's satisfying. We've got our crushed crackers. Let's melt some butter. Now we just need to combine our crackers and our butter. Excuse me, ma'am. Gracie Lou is never far away. 
these are ready to go on top and our casserole is about to come out of the oven right now actually it smells so good i wish y'all could smell this i'm just going to sprinkle the top with our ritz crackers so the ritz crackers are all over the top there's a cat here begging for food this is going this is going back in for another 10 minutes but this time uncovered fix that hair fix what's left <laughs> <laughs> this looks really good it it's good. very comforting on this cold day. Yes. Wow, that is really good. Good. That has to be the best broccoli casserole I've ever had. Okay. <laughs> That's amazing. Good. That is really good. Lots of flavor. It's like creamy. Yeah. It's got sour cream and milk and then cream of chicken with herbs. What is that in there? Is that potato? What is that? Rice. No way. Yeah. That is so good. Cole was uh, doubtful. But he's over there chowing down. Is this a good? Really good. Really good. Mm. He's he's just shoveling in his face. So y'all are just gonna have to take his word on that oh, one. Oh man, that rice just has all that flavor packed in yeah. it. Yeah. Got a lot of stuff going on in here. Okay. And all of it is super flavorful. That okay. rice though. Yeah. I just decorated for Christmas. It is the Monday after Thanksgiving right now. So I've got all this. Pretty Christmas decor on my hutch. I love decorating the hutch. It's like my favorite thing to decorate for the holidays. It is so cold. It got down to like 23 here last night, which I know if you're in the north, that's nothing. But here in South Carolina, that's something. So we're having another casserole tonight. I've done a chicken enchilada casserole before. I've never done a beef enchilada casserole. This one has so few ingredients. It is so simple and easy to throw together. So let's do it. Before we continue on, I've got my commentator over here. All right. AKA my best friend. <laughs> Um, and he is going to read a comment that came in several, probably a couple weeks ago now, and I fell in love with it, and I, I wrote a note for us to read it, and we just haven't done it yet, so let's read it. Becky says, Mandy, the way you refer to Gracie as ma'am has set a really bad example <laughs> for our pets. We have a cat and dog, both boys. They overheard you call Gracie ma'am, and now they insist we call them sir. <laughs> in fact... If they are feeling really uppity, they make us call them Your Royal Highness. <laughs> I love that comment That's so good. much, Becky. Yeah. Um, did she tell us the, the dogs' names? No. Okay. See their names. Well, you give them big old hugs for us, um, but I just thought that was so cute that you now refer to them as Sir. Yeah. I've always, it's the Southern in me, anybody. I don't care if I'm talking to a two-year-old little girl, I call her ma'am. That's just a thing. And you'll have to comment below and let us know, when you say ma'am or sir, is it because it's someone is older? Because a lot of people will say, I'm not a ma'am, don't call me a ma'am. No, as soon as you're born, I'm going to be calling you a ma'am. It's just what I do, yeah. a ma'am or a sir. That's just southern manners. It's just showing respect. It is. It's just, just showing respect. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you're old if I'm calling you ma'am, but... Yeah, I've always called her ma'am. Sometimes ma there's people out there and I just have to call them Mr. So-and-so, you know, just because right. respect. It is. A, it's a respectful thing. And maybe that's just a Southern thing. And they're like, no, just call me Bob. And you're like, okay, Mr. Smith. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I called your mom Miss B for a long time. For the longest time. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't. Now, what Mrs. do you call B. her? What do you I call, call her, her by her name. For the longest time, he called my mama. I mean, after I'm we were still married. still hesitant, though. I he guess. called her Miss B. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's all in love, Miss B. <laughs> Miss Fran. That's right. It's all in love. You can call her and mama. respect you and call, honor. You can call her mama. Because she your mama yeah, now. She is my mama. Yeah, yeah she's, she's been your mama, mama for half your mama. life. She's my mama. She said that sometimes when she sends me text messages, she'll say, she'll conclude with my, my son in love. Oh. Uh, I haven't seen that. I know you have Mama, that's my so mama sweet. in love. <laughs> mama and them. Mama and them. <laughs> mama and them. We're taking the easy route on this recipe. So the recipe tells you how to make your own enchilada sauce, which I should do sometime. But you know what? Old El Paso, they make a pretty good enchilada sauce, so I'm just gonna take their help today, okay? <laughs> We're using pre-made enchilada sauce. But if you want to make your own, have at it. It's in the recipe, which is always in the description box below. Just click on more underneath the video and then it will drop down a description box and I have all of the recipes linked there. So as with just about every other recipe, we are going to preheat our oven to 350. 
Shocker, right? I was about to dice up some onion, but before I do, I'm gonna go heat a large skillet on medium high heat. And while that's heating up, we're gonna dice up our onion and we're gonna shred our cheese. So I'm just gonna use this small onion and we need about two cups of Colby Jack cheese. So I'm gonna shred that. And of course my cheese monster has entered the kitchen so fast. And I've had questions, all of this, this entire thing goes into the dishwasher, y'all. I don't hand wash this, no, no. The whole thing goes in the dishwasher, it's great. She knows the cabinet where I get out my cheese shredder. She sees me go over there. Why is this not wanting to, is there something on? Oh, it's watery right there. Um, she sees me go over to that cabinet and as soon as she sees me grab this, she is on it. I know, we're so excited. Hello, Diva. I know, we're so sided. These are things we're sided for. Okay, here you go. My skillet is nice and hot. We're gonna add in one pound of lean ground beef. In with our ground beef, we're gonna throw in our diced onion. And I made an executive decision. We have jalapenos from our garden that are frozen and I just grabbed one out of the freezer. If you don't like extra heat, skip that, that step. That's totally fine. But we really love a little extra heat, so there you go. Okay, our ground beef, onions, and jalapeno is done. I just turned off the heat, but I'm gonna remove it from the heat too. And we are gonna stir in, we're gonna stir in a can of diced green chilies. Lou, it's not for you. What are you laughing at, Lou? What you eating? Look, I'm over here snacking. You done got me. <laughs> it smells good. Because it's smelling good. It does smell good. He's eating pistachios. Um, and now I need to grab my black beans that I drained and rinsed. And I'm going to throw that in. And let's just stir that around. Gracie Lou. <laughs> let's just stir all that in. Okay, now we're going to take about half a cup. Oh, you're going to do it for me? Pour about half a cup of that in here. Not the whole thing, just about half a cup. Half a cup. This half is, a can? No, half a cup. Ooh. I'll tell you when. Just start going. Uh, that's probably good. Okay, let's stir that in. One-handed. And try not to knock things over. He's going to help me. It's like the old days up in here. Okay. Yum. Okay, I'm going to pour just a tad bit more. It's probably more than half a cup, but I don't care. We just do things the way we want to do them. Gracie Lou, get down, little girl. Said, I'm gonna help. Yeah, she helped eat the cheese. Now we need to go assemble our casserole. Okay, you need a nine by 13 dish. I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of nonstick spray. This is fun times over here. We're gonna pour our enchilada sauce here, just a little bit of it. And you're gonna grab some corn tortillas. You need the ones that are about six inches. Six inches. Six inch ribbon curls. Name that movie. We're gonna take six of these tortillas and you're gonna dip them in the enchilada sauce and line the bottom of our dish. This is fun. So we've got six of our tortillas dipped in the enchilada sauce. Now you're gonna take half of the meat mixture and put that on top. And now we're gonna take a cup of our cheese and sprinkle that over top and then we're just gonna repeat the layer one more time. Now we're gonna top it with the remaining beef mixture. What is that? Oh, it's like from the chilies. No, thank you. Okay, spread that out. And then we're gonna top it with the remaining cheese. I think we need more cheese than I originally thought. I did two cups, but I'm pretty sure we're supposed to have three cups. So I'm gonna shred some more cheese too and put that on top. You want lots of cheese on an enchilada casserole. Yeah, I need a little bit more. I'll be right back. That's the great thing about that cheese grater. It takes no time whatsoever. Okay, this is going in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes. Uncovered, let's go. You hungry? Yes. <laughs> Me too. I am. This looks amazing. Oh yeah. That's definitely like Mexican. It's like a Mexican casserole. Mexican casserole is exactly right. It's an enchilada casserole. Technically. Enchilada casserole. Yeah. It's really, really good. Good. Oh, that's a little spicy there too. Well, I added some that's jalapeno good. in there and then that salsa is hot salsa. Yeah. So The meat is flavored really nicely. Okay, good. Lots of cheese. Yes. Yeah, the texture of the... Uh, the shells tortillas or tortillas yeah um held up really nice okay it's good. not soggy like a all right 
uh, like a flower right. would be like really soggy. Yeah. Well, I'm mm. excited to dig in. Someone was happy that there was plenty of cheese in it. Mm. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Gracie, she got more cheese than y'all saw her get. I gave her some more after, off camera. Little Lou, did you get more cheese? Huh? Yeah, tell him. She was like, I'm not agreeing to this. She's like, no, I didn't get more cheese, I'm starving. Help me. Help me. Who wants one more casserole recipe? I do. This one is a really simple one. If you are short on time and it's got very few ingredients, I think it's gonna be a great one. But this is just called a sausage casserole and this comes from Teresa. Teresa has been married to her husband, Robert, for nine years. They live in Midwest City in Oklahoma. She said her sister-in-law, Sandra, also lives with them. They have five dogs, three cats, and a whole slew of animals that come and visit them because they live way off the road. Sounds like a dream, quite honestly. She said they have a lot of deer, raccoons, possums, even skunks that come and hang out there and she loves it. They feel so comfortable to come back there at their house. You almost sound like um, Snow White. It was Snow White, right? Who was so good with all the animals? You're Snow White, Teresa. But I really appreciate you sending in this recipe because it's a great one for if you're on a budget and or a time crunch. It's perfect. So let's get started. Before I got the camera out, I got this out. <laughs> Baby, I know. There you go, little girl. Are you happy, ma'am? Okay, don't talk with your mouth full, that's rude. We need to preheat the oven to 350. So let's do that. And then I'm gonna go grab a large skillet. I'm gonna go ahead and start heating the large skillet to about medium high, just so it's nice and hot for when I'm throwing everything in. If you've been around here recently, you saw that I did this video here, which was a kielbasa video. And in that video, I decided to try a new brand of kielbasa, and I picked up Holmes Smokehouse. I got it at Food Lion and we really loved it. It is pecan smoked, it has a great flavor. So today we're gonna try another one of theirs and this is the andouille. So I'm gonna chop this up as well as I'm gonna chop up this onion and bell pepper. I'm gonna use my chopper for this just to make it quicker. She didn't say how to slice this so I'm just gonna do it like I typically would. I'm just not gonna make it too thick. Now let me quickly kind of chop this bell pepper to get it ready for the chopper. And then do the same with my onion. And we're just going to dice all of this up. I did not want to do. That's better. Let's go over to the stove. Okay, let's throw our kielbasa in there, our andouille. I may throw just a little bit of olive oil in here too. I didn't even think about that. There's gonna be grease that comes off of this, but just to help the onions and the bell peppers to soften quicker, I'm gonna throw a little olive oil in there, maybe a tablespoon. Let's throw in our onion and pepper. Okay, I'm just gonna let this brown for about five minutes. Okay, now here in this bowl, I'm gonna combine several things and we're just gonna set it to the side. We've got a can of cream of mushroom, a can of cream of chicken. I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing that together. We need one cup of minute rice. I don't ever cook with minute rice. This is pretty new to me. I think I've used it maybe once or twice in my life, but it is not a common thing for me. Let me know below, do you use that? Let's throw that in here as well as our one cup of cheddar cheese. I've got some Colby Jack in here too. You see that on the bottom? I just had a little bit of Colby Jack left, so I shredded up what I had. So let's mix all of that together really well. Get that rice good and coated. I'm gonna go back over to the stove and check on my sausage. This is definitely starting to brown up. Let's stir it really good. It smells so good already. Give this just a couple more minutes and then it will be a, t a time to assemble everything and stick it in the oven. So Teresa did not say that we need to cover this in the oven, but I wonder if I do. I'm thinking about covering it maybe for at least half of the time, but she said to use an eight by eight dish. I have an eight by eight, but I have not used this one in such a long time and it is so pretty. This I got from Goodwill. 
a long time ago, but it is from, I think, QVC. It's Temptations Presentable Ovenware by Tara, made for CSA ink. I don't, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that this line has been on um, QVC before. So anyway, I'm gonna use this today because it's so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna spray it with some nonstick spray and just set it to the side for just a second. We're gonna bring our kielbasa over here and mix it into this. So I'm just gonna add this in there. This is just kind of heavy, so I don't wanna pick it up because it'll hurt my wrist. Maybe it'll be better now that I've lessened the load a little. What you think, Gracie? Yeah, there we go. Okay, now that I've added it in here, we're just gonna mix it all around, get it all incorporated, and let's pour it into our casserole dish. Okay, I'm gonna cover it for at least the first 15 minutes, but this is gonna bake at 350 for 30 minutes. <laughs> Goofy. Let's do 15 for now, and then I'll take off the rice, or take off the rice, nope. I'll take off the aluminum foil if I feel like it's time. Okay, we have 20 something seconds left, so I'm gonna cancel that. We're gonna pull it out and take a look. I mean, it's probably fine. I'm gonna put it back in without the, the cover on because it's not very liquidy, you know? I'm really hoping, I really don't know much about this whole um, minute rice deal, so I hope it works well. Um, I'm not very familiar with it, but I'm sure it will because this is what she makes and her family loves it. So 15 more minutes and then it's gonna be time to eat. This just came out of the oven. It smells really good. This is a simple dinner. I'm excited. I'm sure it's gonna taste amazing. We got some kielbasa or we got some, what, I guess smoked sausage. Yeah, it's the andouille kind. Okay. We haven't tried that kind from Holmes Smokehouse yet, so. Andouille. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Oh, we got a siding That's from like, Cole. What is that? Rice? Yeah. Okay. You know what kind of rice it is? Is that cheese Good as rice. well? You like that rice? Mm -hmm. That is it's delicious. Minute rice. And Cole does not like rice. Mm -hmm. Wow. That rice is really good. That sausage is incredible. Good. I'm so Great glad. Things. What is that green stuff? Uh, green bell pepper. Oh, okay. It's diced up. That's really good. It's There's like, onion in there. It's very, the rice is very creamy. Yeah, it is. I noticed and, that. It uh, doesn't have... It doesn't have like a bite to it at no, all. No, it doesn't at It's all. very soft. Yes, it's very soft. And the sausage just goes really well with this. Yeah, the flavor of the sausage mm -hmm. really permeates everything. Mm -hmm. So, Okay, Teresa. Well, we really appreciate you sending this one in yeah. because I love how easy this was, how budget friendly it was. And these two guys are really, really, really happy. Really creamy, cheesy flavors. Okay. I don't know if there's cheese in here or not. There is. That's what it seems like. Yeah, yeah. there's um, about a cup of cheese in there. Mm. Yeah, you already had some of it. Don't lie. Luda, why are you doing? Ma'am, no. All right, I'm going to dig in if I can get her to be quiet. Shh, shh, babies. You got to be quiet, little girl. Be quiet. If you hear water, the garden is watering itself right now, so that's what's going on in the background. This girl has hardly let me take a bite or two. But this is so good. This is comfort food. It's perfect for today's weather, rainy and cold outside. The guys have both finished their bowls, and they are playing each other in a game of chess right now. That's their thing recently. <laughs> So is it Cole's move or your it's move? It's Cole's move. Okay. Cole's good too. Is he? Yeah. You had to watch him. I've been playing for a few months now off and on and it's fun. It's fun. Okay. Very challenging. Okay. But anyway, chess talk, but <laughs> this is good. As always, I want to hear what you thought about these recipes and which one you're going to be trying first down in the comments. Before you leave, don't forget to check the description box. I've got a link there where you can go check out Mary Ruth's products. You can use the code MROMANDY25 to get 25% off of all of Mary Ruth's products either on their website or on Amazon when it's sold by Mary Ruth's. This deal won't last long, so make sure you go check that out now. Thank y'all for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.